I'd like to show you how to identify stereocarbons or stereocenters and molecules. To be sure that you're answering are there four different groups bonded to a carbon, check that all four bond paths are different starting from the stereocenter. In the early stages when you're analyzing organic molecules for stereocenters, I encourage you to draw the Lewis structure for the molecule. Let's look at molecule A and analyze the molecule from left to right. Let's draw the Lewis structure for this CH2 double bonded to the other carbon. There are the two hydrogens and when analyzing double bonds bonded to a proposed stereocenter, break the double bond into two single bonds. And what is bonded to the other end of this single bond is the atom that has the double bond. So these two carbons are identical because they represent this carbon here. Again, this is fictitious, but for analyzing a proposed stereocenter, this is the way to approach the analysis. Now let's check to see if there are four different bond paths starting from the stereocenter. This bond path is a carbon to a hydrogen, which is identical to this bond path. So immediately we could rule out this carbon as a stereocenter. But let's complete the analysis. This bond path is identical to this bond path because these two carbons, fictitious as they are, represent the same carbon right here. For the same reason that this carbon is not a stereocenter, this carbon of the CH3 is not a stereocenter, nor is this carbon of the CH2. So it leaves the center carbon remaining. Let's draw the Lewis structure for that center carbon, and there's an OH. Now I'm going to intentionally draw the covalent bond a single covalent bond between the O and the H. There's a carbon bonded to two hydrogens and I'm going to intentionally draw those two hydrogens. It's the CH2 and it's bonded to a CH3. Then there is a hydrogen bonded to that carbon and there is a double bonded carbon also bonded to this proposed stereocenter. So let's determine if the bond paths are different. Well this bond path from carbon to oxygen is different than the other three bond paths. And this bond path from the carbon to the hydrogen is clearly different than the other three bond paths. Well, this bond path from the proposed stereocenter to the carbon appears to be the same as this bond path from this proposed stereocenter to this C double bond. If we proceed further in the bond path beyond just the stereocenter, we see that this carbon is double bonded to another carbon and this carbon has three single bonds. So this carbon is different than this carbon. So it is clear that we have one, two, three, and four different groups bonded to this proposed stereocenter. So in fact, there is one stereocenter in this organic molecule. Now we'll look at molecule B. Ring structures add another level of complexity because the carbon-carbon bonds do not terminate. I hope you could see that this carbon, this carbon, and this carbon can be ruled out as stereocenters along with this carbon and this carbon. Likewise, this carbon here with the two identical CH3 groups can also be ruled out. 
So that leaves the carbon bonded to the OH group, and we'll take a closer look at that now. It's clear that this bond path is different than this bond path and these, these other two bond paths. It is also clear that the bond path from this carbon to the H is different than the other three bond paths. The question is, are these two bond paths identical or different? I'm going to go back up to the line angle diagram. Going from this proposed stereo center out to the left, we encounter a CH2 group. Going from this proposed stereo center to the right, we encounter something different. A carbon bonded to two CH3 groups, which is entirely different than this carbon here. So this bond path from the proposed chiral center or stereo center is different than this bond path. So therefore, there is one stereo center in this molecule, and it is right here. Next, we'll look at molecule C. Immediately, we could rule out this carbon at the end because it is a CH3. And just to remind you that the three bonds to the hydrogen create three identical bond paths. That is, we go out from the proposed stereo center, we encounter a hydrogen. We encounter a hydrogen and a hydrogen, three identical bond paths. So that one's out. And by inspection, are there any others we could immediately rule out? We could rule out this carbon here, which is doubly bonded to the oxygen. And as a reminder, for purposes of analyzing stereo centers, we fictitiously redraw that double bond as two single bonds to the oxygen and realize that this bond path from the proposed car or stereo center carbon is identical to this bond path. So that leaves this carbon as a possibility and this one. So let's take a closer look at this carbon. So you can see that there is a CH3 bonded to the proposed stereo center. There's also a hydrogen. So far there are two different bond paths. Oops, we got the three. Two different bond paths so far and there's a third different bond path because there's also an OH bonded to that proposed stereo center. And here's a fourth bond path which is different than the other three because this carbon is bonded to an NH2. And of course it's bonded to the other carbon with the double bonded oxygen. So there's one, two, three, four different groups, four different bond paths. Sketching the Lewis structure for this carbon there's an NH2, with a carbon, which is right here, bonded to the OH. So far there's two different bond paths, and of course there's a hydrogen, third different bond path, and then it's also bonded to the C double bond O. So it's clear that there are one, two, three, four, don't mean to make these look like double bonds, excuse me. Four different bond paths, therefore one, two, three, four different groups, so there are two stereo centers in this molecule. Now we'll look at molecule D. We can rule out all of the carbons in the benzene ring. because they are all double bonded carbons. You could also rule out this CH2 group 
that leaves this carbon bonded to the carboxylic acid in the NH2. Rather than drawing a Lewis structure for this carbon, I'm going to just add in the hydrogen and take a look at the bond paths. This bond path is different than the bond path to the hydrogen, so there's two different bond paths. This bond path is different than these other two so far. And this bond path to the CH2 is different than this bond path to the carbon because this is a carboxylic acid group and this is a CH2 group. Therefore, these two bond paths are different. Therefore, there are four different bond paths, four different groups. So there's one stereo center in this molecule, and then it's right here. Now we'll look at molecule E. And we can quickly rule out many carbons in the ring. This CH2 group, this CH2 group, this CH2, this CH2, and also out here, the CH3 and the CH3. Looking at this carbon, we realize that there are two identical groups bonded to it, two identical bond paths, so rule out that carbon. So that leaves the carbon bonded to the OH, and this carbon, let's take a closer look at this carbon bonded to the OH. I'm going to sketch in the hydrogen, and we see that this bond to the O is different than the bond to the H. Going from this proposed stereo center to the left, we encounter CH2, and if we go the other direction to this other CH2, it seems that we have two identical bond paths. But if the molecule were to terminate at the CH2, then this would not be a stereocenter and we would complete our analysis. But because the bonds continue and we're in a ring, we need to move further along the ring. So we go to the next carbon. And this carbon here is different than this CH2 here. This carbon, unlike the CH2, has an isopropyl group bonded to it along with the hydrogen. So therefore, this bond path is different than this bond path. So this carbon bonded to the OH is a stereo center. Now we'll take a closer look at this carbon bonded to the isopropyl group. And again, I'll sketch in the hydrogen. This bond path is different than the bond path to the hydrogen, and it, it is different than this bond path to the CH2 off to the right, and it's different than the bond path to the left, which is another CH2. So again, it appears that we've encountered two identical bond paths, but because the molecule is a ring and the carbon bonds continue, we need to proceed further. So moving forward, we encounter a CH2 here. Moving forward from this bond, we encounter not a CH2, but a CH, and the carbon is also bonded to an oxygen. So this bond path is different than this bond path. So this is another stereo center in the molecule. And finally, we'll look at molecule F and immediately rule out this carbon, this carbon, this carbon, and this carbon. And if we take a close look at this carbon here, we see that there are four different groups bonded to it. Sketch in the hydrogen and check the bond path around the ring. Going to the left, we encounter a CH2. Going down from that carbon, we encounter a CH bonded to an NH2 and the rest of the ring. So this bond path is different than that bond path. So this is a stereo center. And we'll take a look at this carbon and realize a similar situation. That this bond path 
from carving up through the ring is different than this bond path along the ring. So there's another stereo center along with the first one we discovered.